Good morning everyone, this is Jerby, your Certified Aromatherapist, graduate of New York Institute of Aromatic Studies, and for today, you're up for another episode of Live Well with Aromatherapist, Jerby Ko. So for today's episode, I'm going to be having one of my teachers in social media marketing when I was taking my Certified Digital Marketing course. He has been an educator since 2013. He is the current chair for social media marketing track at Certified Digital Marketing at IIDM. He has handled multiple global brands like Colgate, Coca-Cola, and a lot more others. So for today's guest, it's no other than social media rock star, Jason Cruz. Well, hello, Jason. Good morning. Hello. Aga natin, ha? Eh? <laughs> Oo nga. Thank you so much for giving us your of time. Course. I know that you're super busy. It's all right. Uh, always fun to do things like these. Okay. So, before anything else, share with us naman how have you been doing so far? Like, in the past year, how has your life changed because of the pandemic? Well, actually, I have... Sorry, I'm pouring myself a cup of coffee. Look how much coffee I have with me today. Grabe. I, I, and I finished this by myself, by the way. So, to your viewers... <laughs> Wag na, wala na lang judging ah uh, my life uh, over the last year it's been crazy like crazy changes I think the big major one I got married so mm, yes yeah, congrats thank you that's like the biggest major deal uh, second is fifteen months work from home so intense um, it was really rough the first few months because I was living by myself until I got married in November. And then, yeah, finally, make a salmon. But it was really rough, like mental health wise, crazy bad. Uh, the other one I would say is I actually got to do a lot of the things I like, which is teaching, teaching and giving workshops. And that's because most small businesses, La Luna from DTI, from DOT, they wanted to help the little businesses that were hit really bad by the pandemic. So yeah, and I got uh, I got some good invites to to do some workshops, and I realized na that's the reason why I really like teaching. Because the ability to to help like real people, because I, I work on brands, I'm a big brands. You don't really know eh, if what you're doing is helping the end user. Pero ito kausap mo talaga yung small business owner, so it felt really good. Wow, it's cool that you mentioned that. Because I am also participating in a DTI din yata siya eh, pero parang um, Australian Community Alumni um, Program. Yeah. So I'm also in, pero iba yung parang naging resource speaker namin for social media marketing. But because I have, I'm also an educator, quote and quote. I teach naman aromatherapy. Oh yeah, I saw, I saw your Instagram eh. Yeah. <laughs> Since yung digital marketing days, um, you were one for, I hope you remember me. You were yeah, one yeah, of my yeah. teachers then. Of course I do. <laughs> Ayun, dami mo na kasi naging students for sure. <laughs> and you were so young then, grabe, parang... Yeah, I um, started teaching, I was 24. Grabe, I, I know you were super young, yeah. pero grabe, you were so brilliant na even then. And it's no Thank surprise to, to know that you are currently like the chair of social media marketing track na at the CDM. Yeah. It, it that, happened, that, that, that happened like three years ago and I was actually surprised. So, yung joke ko sa kanila was, walang gusto tumanggap, no? <laughs> but, uh, buti na lang, you know, the stuff works. Because if it didn't, I would have been done and finished in this industry. Oh, nga. And with that, I knew that you were the right person to talk about this. Because some of my followers, my audience, are also very, very, kasi ngayon, it's the pandemic and most people... I mean, a lot of us have been changed by the pandemic. Like, either the, our lifestyle, like the way we run our lives, or our work, maraming nali of yeah. the work, maraming kailangan mag iba ng yeah. career. And with that, a lot of yep. our, a lot of Filipinos are forced to um, innovate or parang be resilient and find ways. Di ba? 100%. 100%. Yeah, 100%. And it's always a big question because we're all stuck at home, retail, um, like, moment yung mga brick and mortar stores are practically obsolete as in sobrang namatay sila the big question now is how to grow their business through social media yeah actually the growth growing business through social media it's it's like the main theme of so many 2021 
uh, talks. Yung recovery topics happened parang siguro like end, towards the end of last year. So ngayon growth, yung mga nag-survive. By the way, just dropping a bit of stats, no? Uh, when I was last talking to DTI, they, there was over 100,000 businesses that closed in 2020. That's, in, that's insane and that's so bad. So what I do like seeing and what I am hopeful for is that a lot of these businesses, you know, they are trying to do something else. You're correct in that the brick and mortar business really suffered. But there are some brick and mortar that are still okay. But that they have like a digital arm or a digital capability. For example, among restaurants that enable delivery. My favorite case study, just to wax on this po- point a bit longer, my favorite case study uh, in the pandemic is the Yushoken Group. I'm a big fan of I'm a big fan of their ramen. Uh, not a sponsored shout out, by the way, but love you guys, <laughs> Yushoken. Uh, I'm a big fan of theirs, and I've always wondered, parang yung sa yung sa placemat nila, di ba? May 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 mayabang na line dun eh, na, um, we don't take, we don't accept takeouts. If you want to enjoy ramen at home, maybe suggest like instant noodles. Parang ganon parang oh, angas ah. It's super angas. It, it had it had it had character. But you know what? In 2020, one of the first restaurants that that enabled takeout and delivery sila. So I use them as a good example because the mindset of shifting and pivoting, if you need to. That's what ensured their survival. And I think so many brands copied, not the man copied, but you know, went along that route where we, we need to change and we need to change now. We don't really know if it will work, but they, they were willing to try. And look, they are one of the businesses that are relatively surviving right now. Yeah, I agree. I agree that it's really important that we are keen to quickly adapt or quickly shift our gears. Um, honestly, it's one of the facets that I had a hard time because in my business, um, Catacorn, if you see the logo uh, somewhere there. <laughs> yeah, I see it. Yeah. So basically, that's my like, my brand. And um, we produce shampoo bars. I, and I've mentioned it, that this also is a DTI program. Na. We had a hard time because our anchor product is shampoo bars and people tend to stay at home now. And wala nang naliligo. <laughs> Or not as much. From two to one, diba? From two times to one time. So, parang diba? grabe. Affected talaga yung business namin. Feel na feel namin. That's a good insight, by the way. I'm gonna note that down. That's a really <laughs> good insight. Tawang-tawa rin yung mga tao sa DTI nung sinabi. But it's it's like the real, ano eh, feedback talaga. Wala na naliligo. Nobody's buying. Number two, most of our our operations are primarily on retail sa malls talaga. So, yeah. another hard hurdle na naman na, na napilay kami because of that, because of the malls. So anyway, let's go back to social media marketing. <laughs> Kasi I wanted to sana to pick your brain on, of course, the current trends on social media. And of course, the things that I've learned in 2015 when I took my digital marketing and social media marketing with you, super marami na nag-iba. Like the landscape is always ever-changing. Um, there's always a question about algorithms being parang switched up and then I also see other key resource people saying no it, it has always been the same ano ba yung totoo kasi nagugulahan din yung mga right. audience natin yeah. what is the real deal right. about all these things okay so um first off ano lang kung dami ko sinabi but first off Jason I wanted to know um for example uh, an MSME a starting business kunyari let's say uh, um gagawa ko ng apple pie I wanna I wanna market it online um, should I be present in all the social media platforms or should I right. focus just on one or two? Uh, good question. I think when it, when, when it comes to the questions of focus, what I would always tell my clients and my students is it's better to be really, 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 really good at one or two platforms versus being present on all that are major halfway effort, about, major half-hearted, not so good. Here's an example. Your your example is food. Food food brands and uh, my wife has a food brand. Major MSME levels then. So what works is Instagram because food porn, right? That's where it all started, and that's where it's always gonna be at a visual platform. So that's the main place to kind of push the products visually. Facebook is also used as a supplement because most of the 
most of the buyers, the customers, available so on Facebook. But the main contents on Instagram, share it on Facebook. And then we also built a website. The website is for the branding, naman, the brand presence. There is this, I just forgot where, specific source-wise, pero websites add that layer of authority, diba? parang believability. If, if you Google for a brand or a product, tas di mo mahanap sa website. Sketchy, eh. No? Parang, you're not, you're not really sure if, ano ba to, marketplace lang ba to? Baka fly by night. <laughs> Baka, eh, di ba? And then there's that, and, and you know, as a person who, who, is, who is a believer in the holistic digital marketing, social media is one aspect. But you also have search, you have content, and you have your branding as well. So the website, at the very least, that's where you have full control. So for you, you know, if, you're, if your viewers are looking for uh, two, two places to be on, I suggest you pick one social platform and then you build a website. The website is super important because you have full control on the content, the look and feel. You can also put in things like order forms. You can have signups for newsletters. Uh, you can also have your about us so that there's that higher level of believability, trust, and that you, know, you control what's being found by people when they search for you. So for example, if I search for Catecornials and some random person has a name, username called Catecorn, and then you have a company named Catecorn Dreams, there are two different results online. And for a user, for a searcher, there's that risk of malilito sila. You know what I mean? It's sino ba yung totoo? Who do I reach out to? So it's also protecting your image, your brand image, which is very important in digital marketing because anyone and everyone in, can make a name, can, can copy something. So pick a social media platform, be very, very good at that one or two, then you go on a website. Even for a big 100 million peso budget kind of clients, I would say the same thing. You know, Pick one or two platforms you can be very good at. And then your own asset. The own asset is either a website or an app. But for your audience, probably a website. Chaka guys, madali lang gumawa ng website. Promise. Yung cheese business website namin, I made it in about four and a half to five hours using like templates on WordPress. Upload ka lang ng high-res photos. Change the colors to your brand colors. Do the write-ups. The write-ups are super important. That's another topic. But yeah, you have a website. And the annual cost for us is what two thousand pesos. It's cheap. Oh, um, for a business. Now. Promote mo anong cheese business yan because we want to check it out. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we do very small batch ordering. The the website is fatpogkitchen.com, but our primary product is kisu. It's a handcrafted cheese spread. It's a yeah. It's a, it's it's a per order kind of batch. We only make per order set up para siguro 26 jars max wow. handcrafted it. yeah so it's very limited run um let's see about next month go oh, um, so it's usually one or one or two batches lang every month oh para serve ako isa <laughs> i want to try yeah, it out. I'll, 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 yeah i'll message you and follow on instagram fat yes i will and i will link all your details also on the podcast um description Okay, Jason. Right. Um, isa isa natin yung social media platform. Let's talk about Facebook sure. first, because I think it's still um, it's still a fact that Facebook is still like the biggest among all of them. Yeah, it is the okay. biggest. It is the biggest, and it has the widest um coverage ng demographics, parin. Yep, absolutely. And um. What do you think is a good um, start? Let's talk about Facebook ads because I know this is the most question mark for all of them. What is a good starting budget for Facebook ads for MSME, for starting businesses? I get asked budgets every week, siguro, like every session <laughs> I get asked that. And the thing is, uh, and forgive me, audiences, for this major cop-out answer, but the budget is highly dependent on, number one, your appetite. And number two, your cost of product. Your cost of product is very important because how much you're willing to spend on your ads must be justified by how much money you're making in your business. I mean, I understand. Negotiate for 100% of you. So you want to make sure that the budget you're spending is not too much, na medyo lugi ka if nothing happens, but it's enough that it's getting results for you when you need those results. I'll give you an example. 
When I was um, running the Facebook marketing budget for my friend's CrossFit box, ang um, Facebook ads budget namin was 30,000 a month. And then you might be wondering, you might be wondering na uh, yung Facebook budget of 30,000, parang ang dami, parang malaki siya for a small business. But the way we thought about it kasi was, one membership per month is 3,000 per month. If we can close 10 members every month just from Facebook ads, we're break even. If we get any more than 10 members, positive ROI. So yung 30,000 was dictated by uh, parang, can we get 10 in one month? Now, how do you arrive at 10? It's a risk. You gamble. Your first month or first three months is really risk. It's guess. It's major guessing game. Eh? The reason you want to do this is optimizing. So, I mean, if your listeners are taking notes, the optimization part is super important para may benchmark ka. Your best benchmark on Facebook ads is your own performance. So if 30,000 a month is generating 15, 20, 25 signups for you, then okay, Sha, you might even want to increase because you're seeing quite a good return. Now, if you're getting less than 10, there's something to be fixed there. It's either the call to action or how you're telling people to sign up. Maybe it's the image, hindi siya attractive. Maybe it's the targeting in the location. So the way we did it is six slots lang yung parking spot sa harap ng building namin, right? So we, we did not want to advertise this to a lot of people. If you have members who bring cars, aka malayo, ma, mahahasa lang sila and pangit yung customer experience nila. So we targeted people who are within walking distance lang of the CrossFit box. So yung location was only talagang CBD Makati. So people can take 10-15 minutes to walk. Then the parking doesn't become an issue. You know those little things? Uh, if you think about it, then it allows you to kind of figure out how much you're going to spend on your ads because you're limiting your audience. Actually, limiting your audience is a good tactic. It makes your ads more focused. On the flip side, I have another sideline, which is I, 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 I help sell watches. So people consign watches to me, uh, and then uh, I sell it via my Instagram and my Grabe, Facebook boy. <laughs> So two platforms will be good in one or two. So Instagram, because watches, watch porn. It's like food porn. And then Facebook Marketplace, because the, in, in the Philippines, the higher-end higher, higher end vintage watch market is really on Facebook. So my budget is 500 pesos per month. Layo, no? 30,000 is 500 no. pesos. Not bad. The thing kasi, the 500 pesos, why it works, is that dinadaan ko sa write-up. I see that the main problem with watch sellers is that their write-ups are super boring. They say the size of the watch. They say the brand. We know that. If you're a watch fan, you know all of those. So dinadagdaan ko siya ng story. Actually, dun sa marketplace review sa akin. It's, apparently, it's my item description na mataas yung score ko. So, when you tell the story of this watch was, in, was made in 1966 and this was you know, brought over from Europe, yeah, first owner, blah, 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 all these hands, ito yung history niya, yung movement na to can be found in other watches. It pulls in people. So, my 500 peso ad budget works well. If I can sell one watch worth 200,000, with the with net revenue of Boeing Bawiga. I mean the, the cost of good is probably 150 or 160. Mm-hmm. And then your net rev is maybe because you negotiate down pa yan. Ganyan, yan, yan, it's a watch business. So maybe you make ten thousand. So if you make ten thousand out of five hundred pesos of Facebook ad budget, okay naman, no? Parang, parang okay na, no? So yeah, it's, it was pretty good. Even if you sell one watch, the simpato mo is five hundred bucks, you're break even so it makes a lot of sense for you know my my, my clients now they, they would spend millions every month because they're big brands so ang haba ng sinabi ko because i wanted to explain the context of how you should be setting your budget diba? it's your business appetite it's your cost of product cost of goods the more expensive your product is per person that's buying it ideally the higher your budget kasi you're playing it on how much effort eh, to, to get these people to buy from you. So don't be scared to allocate a large amount, like 30. I know 50,000 is a lot for an MSME, but think about it. Magkano bang rent sa mall if you have a shop? 200,000 sa BGC, di ba? Sa 200, 250, mura na ngayon eh, sa high street. That's your rent. Tapos wala pang pumupunta. Here is Facebook where you can deliver the content to anybody you want in the world. And then provide ka na lang ng delivery. So, 
parang the the math makes sense. So that's how you should be thinking about it. Don't think upfront costs, but think about your appetite to spend and how else would you have spent that money anyway. I have a question though, Jason. For your watch business, paano yung targeting mo niyan? Um, in terms of location, is it like the entire Philippines and CR? No, uh, I'm a bit different. I because we're dealing in this is secondary market, right? So these are the things that people. The sad news is that people are selling their watches because either na walang sila trabaho last year, may nagkasakit. They need to raise funds quickly. So it's a very liquid market, and you want it sold as fast as possible because my customers they need they need the cash talaga so how it works i i focus only on metro manila because if i have a buyer from cebu or davao nag inquire maraming maraming nag inquire it takes longer kasi may back and forth magse-send ka ng photos videos tapos pag-iisipan nila over one week and then of course there's the the payment and sometimes you want to make sure that it's delivered by a trusted courier to them So it's harder, but I guess in uh, there are some other people naman who do nationwide targeting. It works because mas malawak yung audience. I'm actually not doing. I'm actually not. I'm breaking one of my rules, which is optimizing my audience. But that's because of a personal, uh, a personal need to help my consignees move their pieces as fast as possible. Mm-hmm. What do you mean by optimizing your audience? Meaning you're super targeted lang within your community, like the um, no, no, not, not, e- not even just like targeting it to a smaller audience, but rather focusing on who are your possible buyers. So I give you an example in the car business. Uh, one of my clients before is a car brand. Most people would sell sports cars, expensive sports cars, to people above the age of forty-five, because the sales data says. Yung mga bumibili naman are people na may kaya. And these are usually men who are 45 and above belonging in a senior position in companies. Logically, di ba? It makes a lot of sense. Men like cars. Very logical. They have money. 45 up. Meron ka nang siguro like 5 to 8 million to spend on a sports car. And then, if you you usually make that kind of money kasi senior ka in a company or you, know, you, you own your business. The thing is, in the real world scenario, When I look around me and I look at that car brand, nobody drives that car brand age 45 and up. It's all people our age. So my disconnect. So optimizing your audience is talking to multiple audiences at the same time. My theory was that the older segment in the sales data, sila yung payer, pero hindi sila yung end user. The end user is probably a, a son, a the nephew, son, yeah. or... Kung ikaw yung sugar daddy, di ba? Edy yung sinusuport, yung, yung pinapa, pinapa-aral program. Sugar babies mo. Yeah, mga, sugar, mga sugar babies. So, malay natin, di ba? Not, no, not here to judge. They're all customers for me. So, Correct. the way I would optimize my audience, I, I have two communications talking to two different people. For the payers, showing the value of this vehicle for the end user is to show the attractiveness and the appeal and the status symbol that you get. From driving this expensive sports car, so if you do that campaign or that that approach at the same time, which is what I love about digital marketing, you can do things at the same time. Pag on the off, you know, pag nag-usap na sila, and then you know, usually the the dad will ask the son, "Oh, kakasal ka? Anong gusto mong wedding gift?" And these are very rich people. That's how they talk, right? Like for me, I ask for a coffee maker, but I guess there will be some there. There's a hundred KPI goes sell a hundred cars, because yeah, it's five to eight million, right? If there's gonna be a hundred people out there na, oh dad, uh, gusto ko ng bagong convertible, gusto ko ng bagong coupe. Gagawin naman eh. Like my my parents didn't blink when I asked for this coffee maker. So, siguro at that particular income segment, iba din yung things that they like. So yeah, that's how I would that's how I would optimize audiences. Think about your payers, your your buyers, but also think about your users. Sometimes magkaiba. Eh. Like your shampoo, correct, correct. Or your soap business, diba? It could be a parent buying or stocking up their kids who first who moved out for the first time. So stock up their condo. Because I have friends like that, eh, diba? Pag uwi sa condo nila, pan, oh, dabi kong groceries. Ah. Yung pala, it's like the, the parents worry about them, so they buy it. So dalawa actually yung target market mo. Tama. Good point to make, actually. Because um, usually when people talk about Facebook ad and targeting, they're always so boxed out in one specific segment. Tama yung sinabi mo, you should think of the end user. Madami. And, 
yung may purchasing power talaga. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz usually it's different. Yeah, I've had um, I've had clients where lima yung target audiences and it's perfectly fine because iba-iba yung aspect ng product that you sell, 'di ba? So like real estate, you're selling it to retirees, you're selling it to first-time homeowners, you're selling it to college students maybe who need who will, you know, buy, their parents will buy it, but they will want it. You're selling it to newlywed couples. Uh, ano pa? You're selling it to investors who want to have a rentals like a, a, a group of properties for rentals. So that that alone, dami and dami ang target audience. Mm-mm. And with that, iba ibang target um, audience. Iba iba rin yung campaign na irerun mo sa Facebook. Yeah. Matrabaho lang, but it's uh-huh. it's all about maximizing that one platform that you have, which is Facebook. Okay, thank you so much for that. Let's move on to Instagram because I think I don't know, pero most businesses now parang sobrang mas nagboom yung Instagram in over the past year. It depends right? on and, the business. It depends on the business. Correct. correct. Like usually, kasi ano ba yung mga nag kick off during the pandemic. It's usually food. Food. It's usually handcrafted things. Yeah. Hand, and, handcrafted um, things. Yeah. <laughs> like you, your cheese. And my, mine is basically all handcrafted things yeah. as well. Um, and before, when we were talking about Instagram at social media marketing school, ganyan, it's always just about building a community. Yeah. But now, it's so much more than that. Diba na? There's also e-commerce there na, customer service is also there na. Yeah. And do you still think that um, you have to be consistent on Instagram? Like, is there an ideal number of posts that you have to make in a day or in a week? Or Right. Hindi ako big believer in boxing yourself in the number of posts for your brand. I think your number of posts is dictated by, by your capability and your health. Uh, as, as a content creator... I've I've gone through the burnout phase, and you are all content creators, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. You you feel like you have to produce content because yun yung schedule mo. I realize this is a uh, this is not the best marketing advice, but this is very good life advice because I have a work life content channel, right? Uh, your number of posts is dictated by your capability and your sanity. So if uh, you're a small business and you used to post once per week, and that's generating sales for you, great. Once per week works for you. However, if there are one or two weeks where nagkasakit ka, you're making more products, you're improving your R&D, you're experimenting with something, like attend ka ng workshop, you do things to help yourself develop, it's okay to miss content. It's okay. Bawi ka na lang after. And I learned that from, from YouTube itself. Because, um, you know, we get to work with, with people there, and you know get to you get to i got exposed to some like big creators and they do talk about the content plan burnout uh for businesses it's a little tricky what you want to identify kasi is your seasons you cannot sell unless you know you're a day day to day product like ano ba food there is a there's actually an opportunity for you to not post as much social media the way it works is it's better for you to have a one content post na mahaba yung lifespan versus many, many content posts that die every two days. That's not good kasi burnout yun sa'yo. And if you're working with an agency like ours, mahal yun. You're paying per piece. Eh. And for if you're hiring an artist, mahal yun. You're paying for per piece. Diba? Correct. So I would suggest pick your, 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 your data will tell you this. Or if you're in the business and you know, you roughly know your business, it will tell you what, what your seasons are. Sa CrossFit business, uh, fitness business in general, ang season namin doon, January to March. If January to March, we have not made the money yet for the year, malabo na yan. This is pre-pandemic, ha? This is pre-pandemic. You know why? Nagahabo lang tao ng summer body. Okay, yeah. And, and before, labor, before labor, before okay. labor, And we, and you know, myself and two other guys in this, because we're a lot of us are marketing people, like hardcore marketing nerds. So we were like super deep, deep, deep into the data. Ang taas ng signups January. In fact, you would probably make your first two quarters or first half year by January signups alone. And the thing for gym owners is that we don't actually, this is gonna sound so bad. Ah. If you don't use your membership, sorry na lang eh. Diba? We're, we're all about, we want you to be healthy, sure. Bayad mo yan. 
But if you don't show up, okay lang din eh. Hindi, diba, hindi, hindi maglalas pag yung equipment, uh, the facilities are cleaner. But of course, as much as possible, we, we believe in that ethos of, come on, work out, build that habit. But that's probably 10 to 15% of your members. For the rest, they will sign up for the one-year membership. And then after May, after June, wala na yan. Bye-bye. See you in December. Magahabol. <laughs> diba? Magahabol na yan. And again, I'm not saying this because I'm cynical. I'm saying this because of its fact. Uh, Correct. My classes from Jan to March before, I, I used to coach kasi kettlebell. So my classes from Jan to March, oh my God, I had like 25, 27 people in a 30 max class. So pagod na pagod ako, nagsaspot ng tao. And then mga July, rainy season, parang tatlo na lang yung students ko. Honestly, tatlo. Tapos masaya for me because, you know, I get to focus with them. I get to build a, a deeper relationship. Pero wala eh, parang... Tag-ulan na, like people are hassle to walk to the box. Ano pa ba? Or if they drive, baha. Uh, ano pa? Tapos na yung beach season. So, uh, wala, bawi na. So, the seasons for the fitness industry, usually first quarter, tapos last quarter. For for us, in in in, in I'm, I'm in a tech agency now. Our season is usually end of the year because companies are looking for new systems to put in place, new partners before the year starts in January. So my October to December, ngaragan yan. What's my mm-hmm. point? She's business namin December, ano November December. Who? Because gifts. So Correct. Point, point ko sa habang kwento na to is if you can identify as a business where your peak seasons or your most important sales seasons, you can pace yourself content-wise. Okay? You don't have to create content every day. You don't have to. Uh, you want to stay, you, have, you want to have enough content para top of mind ka. You don't want to be forgotten. It's expensive to get back customers. But if you can keep them knowing, remembering you, it's more effective in the long run. So, If you can identify what your you know, your seasons are, then you can do your sprint of energy there. Spahinga ka for a while. Then sprint of energy there. Spahinga ka for a while. This is actually, this is something I learned when I was working on Coke. Coke has specific seasons. Coke has Correct. summer. Summer is the most, imp- Coke, summer is the second most important. Christmas is the most important. But mm-hmm. if I can hit summer, if I can hit back to school, and if I can hit Christmas with a crap load of content because I used to be the content creator for Coke. Okay na ako eh. For the re- like tagulan, soft drinks is like not top of mind. You know, people want to have coffee, tea during rainy season, diba? hot choco. Right. Yung mga gusto mo eh. <laughs> so, my content would reduce maybe once a week, twice a week. Pero pag Christmas, means I used, I had a time where tat three a day. Wow, okay. Ngaragan talaga yan. But because Christmas, you, know, you, want, you want to make sure that people are always drinking Coca-Cola during Christmas. Dinners, lunches, barkada, catch-ups, yan. Kaleng, okay. That's a very good insight. Now, it's actually according to your season. Because I was about to ask about, we just discussed about the frequency, the cadence. And you know, I was about to ask, now, is there such a thing as too much um, posting in a day? But you just mentioned, pwede pa lang kahit three times a day. Because... I was thinking like maybe before, like in 2015, it's fine. Kasi parang iba yung the way it rises yeah. up to the feed, di ba? Yeah. Uh, But the, now it's kind of different. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, I, I would say the fundamentals of content marketing is still the same, which is, the, you know, make content to the appetite of your audience or your customers, make content to your abilities and make sure that the lifespan of this content is as long as possible. So one of the things I learned as a YouTube creator is try to make content that's evergreen, the yung mas long-term versus mas trendy. I stopped doing trendy content na because I noticed yun yung pinamababang views. But I had a video on reviewing LinkedIn Learning. I, you know, I took 12 courses on LinkedIn Learning so I could tell my community, is it worth your time? And that's been my best performing in terms of like the, the time spent people are watching it. Uh, also, it's one of my highest viewed videos because it's it's important for people to to know about LinkedIn Learning any time of the year because you can sign up any time of the year. So evergreen content is content na bagay siya anytime. I think that's more efficient. 
so that it's you know you can recycle and repurpose your content then you won't be you won't be super tired another thing that another trick that I'll, I'll teach your your community in terms of content creation is to do it in batches something i learned working in in the agency for for you know multinational companies you spend two days just shooting 200 pieces of content like photos you naka set up ka na eh. gawin mo na lahat and then as you go through the year you know you meron kang baol of content actually that's what we did for our cheese business we did the photo shoot of the two main products one full day as in plating uh photography this sakto you know the this, 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 the light was very good so we're like oh, today's the day and then uh Yun, as in naragan that day. But anytime we need content to promote, if we're making cheese next week, meron na kami yung pictures to post. So actually, good point. Ganon din ako as a YouTuber. Yeah. Batches din. But, uh, <laughs> so nagpapalit lang ako ng top. Tanggal lang ng ponytail. Ganun. Oh my god, sobrang totoo. My friends, some of my viewers actually noticed na nagpalit lang ako ng shirt. Kasi I had an eagle-eyed viewer. Student ko din before sa CDM. Napapansin niya kasi kailan ako nagpapagop. I have one haircut. This is like the longest hair I've had in in maybe four or five years. So, Very true. <laughs> na, napapansin niya na pag yung hair ko is same for three videos, ah, shinuto one day lang. Kasi the next video, eh, may bigote ako bigla and <laughs> I have hair. Ah, okay, weeks, na wala yung bigote. <laughs> uh, or two weeks later to. So it was hilarious. But you know, that's that that makes a lot of sense. Ha? Kasi nakasetup ka na. And you know this as a YouTuber, doon, no? ang dami mong isa setup. Yung yung hindi nakikita ng community natin na minsan one hour ka nagsasetup, check ka ng light. And sometimes I wait pa kasi if I have like a neighbor, I live in a condo. So if my neighbor's baby's crying, maghihintay talaga ako. Pero ano oras kayo makakatulog tong baby na to? <laughs> Oo nga, that's true. Ako rin, ganun. Um, anong oras niya matutulog yung mga cats ko para wala tayong ingay? <laughs> Sadali sa video nila. Ayan. Okay, so, um, with, in relation to what you've mentioned, di ba, you said na um, the number it doesn't really matter. Dapat it's always based on our ability and yung appetite. Um, I wanted to know how you can grow yourself on Instagram organically, like in terms of yung... I mean, are likes still important? I'm I'm sure engagement is important, but I also see other content yeah. um, key speakers talking about engagement as regards to yung save, yung share. Because before it's just like and comment, but now Instagram has saves and share. Ano ba talaga? What's the real deal behind that now? You want as many interactions as possible. That's the main gist of it. With any social platform, the way the system learns is if gusto to ng tao, they'll interact with it. Diba? And you know this on YouTube. That's why we want people to like and comment, right? Because any interaction point, this is sending a signal to the platform na people like this. If they're commenting, they're engaged. May investment ng oras. If they're liking it, they're literally signaling na they like that content. They want to see more of it. Uh, so yes, I would say in Instagram, you and don't forget hashtags. Uh, I, I actually met really, really cool collectors in the watch community because of hashtags as in they would i've never met these people i don't know how they look like because if you have an if you have an instagram account for products diba hindi mo naman papakita mukha mo it's just the stuff so you nag, nagkakaroon na ng commenting back and forth para hoy like today before we had a call uh one one this guy that i follow uh my my watch instagram he fo- follows this guy's watch instagram so comment ako na wow, this new strap that you got like completely changed the look of this particular watch. And then he comments back on one of my pieces now, this is amazing, great condition for a 50-year-old. It's like a community. And then his followers would check out my stuff. And then I guess my community members, which is very small because I only started this a month ago, they would check out the people that engage. Uh, so it builds that strong community. Uh, I've, I've made good friends as well from hashtags. It's a mountaineering. Naman. You probably remember this uh, in your time CDM. I... I I'm a I'm an outdoors guy, right? So when I went to Nepal in 2017, our team met with Nepali people and he, and these these were our guides, right? Pero parang magkakilala na kami for a long time. Kasi on Instagram, nagko-comment comment kami sa mga photos nila parang, "Oh my god, you guys went to this mountain last week and then you're going to another one this week. You guys are crazy." Listen, you know, the, the whole we add each other on Facebook. And then so by the time we got there, 
yung tipong we felt very comfortable sleeping in the same hut together Aww. you trust them now with your life it's very it's very sweet tapos the oldest guy in 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 their group is 64 65 years wow. old we call him father kasi we we can we can't pronounce his Nepali name so we just <laughs> called him father so he he and then he's very grumpy in the morning parang you call me father but you don't you don't you wake up very late you don't respect <laughs> me like a father so he pa- may ser my sermon kami for 16 days sobrang laugh trip but on our flight home oh. umiyak kami when we hugged him kasi and again this is just from grabe no this all started kasi a year before we found them via a hashtag it's it's insane like community building on Instagram i would say is more meaningful versus like a Facebook. Facebook, you attract everybody. But people who follow and engage with you on Instagram, they tend to be like-minded people. And I, I use the word like-minded in a more deeper... More personal, you know, With a deeper meaning. It, it's more personal because you find communities on Instagram. And you won't naman follow... You won't use the hashtag naman if wala kang Diba, wala kang connection with that hashtag. You won't follow a community if you're not interested in that community. Okay. Sayang lang oras mo. So I say, if you're a business and you're on Instagram, focus on what hashtags can you start using, being present in. Because this is a really good way, strong way to uh, to build your to build your relationship. Correct. And um, in relation to hashtags, good thing that you've mentioned. Because... We all know that you can use 30 hashtags right now, right? 20, but, I think. 20 na lang wa? Okay. Kasi I iba-iba. I, I see a lot of um, discrepancies among different key yes. people. Like, diba? People... Two days ago, I attended one uh, social media key person saying, ah, dapat 2 to 3 lang, pero dapat yung bigger high impact. And then may nakita na naman ako 8 to 10. And then there's yeah. 30. And now there's 20. What is the no, it's not wrong. That? It's not wrong. Uh, all of those guys who said that, it's not wrong. I think it's the usage. So uh, I'm going to go on my Instagram right now. I'm going to go to my watch account. Uh, let me just switch. My, my watch account, by the way, is another, another fucking watch. Uh, <laughs> easy to find. <laughs> EFW yung, yung picture. So the hashtag I use is... I have... So if for your listener, for the community here, uh, there are two ways to think about hashtags. You have a generic one. That's designed for visibility. If you want to be found, you use generic hashtags. But you also have specific hashtags. This is your long tail, higher value hashtags. Yung specific hashtags will have very few users. But the people who use them and the people who look for them, interested talaga. It's higher conversion. So my general hashtag for my last photo is watches of Instagram, watch collector, vintage watch, you know, run of the mill. But I also have very specific hashtags like vintage Lakut. I have um, uh, Valju72, which describes the machinery inside the watch. You are not going to be using that hashtag or following it if wala kang pake dun sa movement na yun. But because this is a very specific watch, you might actually f- want to find it. And that's that's what works for me. So if you are using your hashtags, I don't want you to think of the number first. Think about the usage. You have a good mix of your general and your specific. What's the mix? I would say five to eight generic plus five to eight specific is a healthy mix. I will always get quoted on the numbers. Eh? That's why I will give a range. Because yeah, it, it's, it's so different per brand. A lot of hashtags work for watches, for food. Because people use a lot of hashtags. But let's say you're selling tables. Parang hindi naman, it's hard for me to imagine you using, finding 20 different hashtags for tables. Malabo ata. Correct. But it's, it's possible. Ha? I wouldn't know. So, uh, But it's possible. But yeah, 5 to 8 generic, 5 to 8 specific. But the important lesson here is have a mixture of both. It's not the number. It's it's the mix that you use. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for that. Um, another question is on Instagram. Are templates? Diba sa, I'm not sure if you've seen this. Pero sa Instagram, marami ako nakita mga caption templates or something templates. Yeah. Um. Or or even yung um yung aesthetic mismo. 
do you have any recommendation um recommended aesthetics for instagram like i normally see now the trend is most people are using yung mga quotes sayings yeah. any motivational things and inspirational what is the truth behind that it's easy to make it's easy to make as content uh plus there's a lot of templates to use right you go on canva uh that's mm-hmm. how i made the logo for my for my watch instagram it's just canva mm-hmm. i was done in five minutes Uh, it's easy to use. It's high engagement, you know, because people like seeing those things. If you can, if you, I think, don't think about it like as a template, but think about it as why is this account using this? And if you notice, it's really for engagement, it's for interaction. It, could, it works with the community. Um, yeah, it's not that complicated. Mm-hmm. So are um, yung mga binibenta na caption template, are those worth buying or not really? Oh, I'm so torn. My answer would be in your budget line of thinking question. As an right? ad If, man. <laughs> no, I, I would I would be very fair and say it's like setting your budget. Is if you have the budget to buy a template and use it for a particular purpose, but it has to be clear what your purpose is. If you're buying it because it's uso, that's probably not a good use of money. But if you're buying it because you think and you believe it will create engagement for your community, go for it. it diba? May balik sa'yo dapat. Whether that's sales or that's brand love, which is very hard to measure, but I guess you see it's a comments if people like your content. Then then it's worth it. But yeah, there's a lot of free ones out there. So I've, I personally have never had to buy a template for any of my <laughs> business small businesses or accounts websites i would spend money because hosting and all but social media templates i'm a canva whore Shamba naman, zone of genius mo na yan, yung mga caption and story ano? <laughs> I, i have so much to learn but i'm telling you like the way the new generation does I it agree. Grabe. I agree. And in relation to that, do you think that brands or MSMEs, um, it's smart for them to also be on TikTok? Yes and no. Yes, if your community is there, and you would know this by asking them, you know, just literally tweet or post, are you guys on TikTok? And then if they say they are, you, you make an account and you make a content out of there. But if they're not, then it's not worth the time and investment. Um, cop out answer now, yes or no. <laughs> so yung yes part is because the potential is very high. Like I, I, I made my account a few days ago. I have no idea how to make this kind of content that people are making. Like I, in theory, I know how to use it, but you grabe ang galing ng mga editing ng mga tao, right? So, parang shit, that's amazing. I want I need to learn that because I'm supposedly like, the, you know, a social media person, <laughs> but. Using something naman does not take away into seeing the benefit for it. So uh, we 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 ha- we had a client in retail, fashion brand with e-commerce, and TikTok's gonna be very big for this brand because their target audience are younger Gen Z, young older Gen Z, mid twenties mm-hmm. na, so it's nearer to your younger millennial crowd. But the younger Gen Z, this is big for them. They're probably not gonna be shopping on websites. They're probably not gonna be, the diba? They're not, probably not on Facebook. A lot of them are not even on Facebook. Mm-hmm. So TikTok is going to be a good channel for awareness and for building that relationship. However, for my other clients, someone who has real estate, your target audience are retirees or investors who have not yet shifted into TikTok. It doesn't make right. sense. It makes a lot of sense for us to be on LinkedIn and to develop a website. So website and LinkedIn for this real estate. Because we're talk- we know our target market and this is where they are. It always goes down to, nasan ba sila? If they're there, sundan mo. If they're not, it's trendy, pero it doesn't make sense. Correct. Um, I noticed lang most of the handcrafted brands or handcrafted MSMEs, they are starting to migrate to TikTok. Even si Insil, um, Insil was our guest a few episodes back. She said nga na yun. She's She's um trying hard to be also on TikTok. Like ako, I also struggle to be on TikTok. As in, hirap na hirap ako. <laughs> Doing pa lang the, the, the reels. Ano parang, ano ba tong effect na ito? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very yeah. big, big adjustment. <laughs> It is. Uh, so that, that I can tell that we're all millennials because if you have a hard time <laughs> 
like tra- tra- transferring platforms you're a millennial <laughs> kasi we, we we literally grew up facebook twitter and instagram you know, that's the big three i agree oh yeah she's she's doing a really good job uh, with her with her brand I mean, i'm so proud of her kasi I saw the struggle in the hotel business where she was. Mm-hmm. She's from there, but she's from the hotel business. And I have so many friends in the hotel industry na two days a week lang sila nag-work. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then here she is building a mini empire, growing. Oh. Tapos ang, gan- ang ganda ng content niya on Instagram. Do you see her behind the oh. scenes? Sobrang laughter. Ang galing nga eh. Ang galing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so is Twitter still relevant? I'm put on for the spot. MSMEs, ha? I've for MSMEs. My answer commitment to and I'm on record. <laughs> I would say for MSMEs, it's not the best channel to be on. It's not uh, the and just fact factually, the numbers on Twitter for business is going down a bit. Uh, we see it. We see it happen to brands where. You're on Twitter, but your effort's not paying off. It's not leading people to a website. It's not leading people to an e-commerce platform. Maybe they're doing it wrong, but there's also the changing landscape where Twitter is a megaphone for a lot of people. But it's not necessarily a place where, especially Filipinos, it's not necessarily a place where you go to look for your favorite brand or product and then bibilika. That That era, I think, ended around 2015, 2016 when Twitter was a powerful tool for conversion. I'm not saying it's completely dead. I'm saying there's better options out there. For example, Facebook's going to be so much better for businesses because you have you have a storefront in the form of your page. Instagram's probably going to be so much better as well. If, you have, if your product is in beauty, personal care, food, travel, lifestyle, five categories. If your product is somewhere in the five Instagram is going to be very good for you. I work B2B. Tapos, I'm a professional speaker. Uh, I use my YouTube channel to find leads. YouTube and LinkedIn for me. Because my, my corporate workshop and my corporate training, ang target audience ko are companies. You know? it's, uh, so a professional, dun ako sa professional platforms. Not necessarily. Twitter, I won't be able to find them. I don't think there's an HR person out there <laughs> looking for a trainer. <laughs> On Twitter, yung tin tweet ko is like my change.org <laughs> signature. And uh, yeah, pag, pag may galit ako sa mundo, I think that's also another behavioral change. You know? Twitter is like your galit sa mundo platform. <laughs> Correct. Uh, very healthy for people's mental health, not very good for businesses <laughs> looking for leads. Correct. So I say, however, what I think people, businesses should use Twitter for, use it to find out what's on the pulse of your community. That's, it's, it's honest, eh. So what people are tweeting is generally what they're feeling. Mm-hmm. So if you want to get a feel of like your market situation, how people are thinking, what are their struggles, what are their problems, go there and observe. That's what I would advise my clients as well. With the like, bigger companies, you don't have to be active on a platform to know what's going on. You can just be there and observe. Social listening. Get insights. Yeah, you get insights. You listen in. You observe. You know, You spend time listening rather than making content. That's also a good work-life advice. Mm-hmm. You know, spend more time. But, and I'm talking so much <laughs> here. Uh, so, but yeah, it's spend more time trying to figure out what people want versus like bombarding them with ads and content. Tama. Actually, because before, when we were studying about Twitter, it was always mentioned that Twitter is for CSR. But I realized, parang hindi na. Kasi even Facebook can do that. Even Instagram can do that. But like what you've mentioned, no? You use some of these social media as an engagement engagement tool, as something where you, where you get your information from, like polls. But what if you wanted to get their information, like their feedback? But you're so small, you're just starting, and you kind of end up not getting any direct response. It's like you're talking to um, crickets. How would you switch that up? Parang how do you spark interest or engagement, even if you are just a starting um, brand or company? Yeah, um, the first few months is is really tough for for new. I won't even say just companies, but for anybody who's on a new platform, it's gonna be tough unless you're like super sick to begin with. Then that's madaya, because you have a community to bring with you. Mm-hmm. What I would say is 
it has to be very clear what you are, what you stand for. It has your content has to be razor sharp, razor focused. The biggest mistake that businesses make is that they think they have 10 things they're good at, so they say 10 things to people. That's the wrong way of doing it. And I rarely say something is right or wrong, but this one I'm going to say, that's the wrong way of doing it. You pick one or two things that you are amazing at, and that should be your first salvo or to get that initial kick of engagement or interaction. So, for example, if you're making your handcrafted soap, handcrafted shampoo, there are a lot of companies who can claim that they make handcrafted soap, handcrafted shampoo. What if your particular soap, this is just made up stuff, your particular soap diba, is made from like Taal Volcano Ash. My ganon, <laughs> my Trevor na ganon. It's, uh, I just totally use the word Trevor. <laughs> I'm getting influenced by my colleagues. Uh, that's something unique, talk, talk worthy. And for a specific group of people, that's very important. So this is a bit more uh, hyped up example, but it's the, the lesson here is, can you pick one or two things that you can banner? We use that in marketing a lot, that you can banner or your champion content. That will, init- that will get your initial engagement. Here's the best part. If it works, then you know that's your niche. That's your initial salvo. What I like about digital marketing is that if it doesn't work, it's not a failure. You learn something. Ah, that's not what my community is looking for. So ibahin ko. Here's the weird thing. I think everybody who knows me knows me for marketing. But when I made marketing content on YouTube, nobody cared. <laughs> like literally, parang wala ang pumansin. Like zero. It's, uh, well, very few. Siguro that's like, my, my friends and my students. Na Correct. Yung mga ex-students mo. <laughs> Kami. Ex-students. Yan. And, but I noticed that's not what I wanted to do on this platform. I, I, I wanted to help out um, my Gen Z colleagues with their work-life stuff and my younger millennial colleagues. Kasi, I, I, I'm, I've always been like the kuya of a group. In, 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 in uni, I was like the kuya of the batch. Uh, in at work, I'm like the kuya of the department. So I, I, I was I get asked a lot about work life advice. So I'm like, Teka, the marketing thing, people know me for that professionally. That's my content on LinkedIn, and that's how I built my community on LinkedIn. I don't have to do that on YouTube. So I started creating content on improving self development, both for work and life, and that's what worked. You know, things like giving people reviews on LinkedIn, how to present better, how to how to handle toxic office cultures. Those are the kinds of content that got positive feedback. So the thing with digital marketing is if you're struggling to find engagement, you can change, you can shift. In traditional marketing, it's harder because you commit ka ng long-term engagement dyan, di ba? Parang ito yung campaign ko for the quarter. Magihintay ka ng three months of failure <laughs> to know something doesn't work. Minsan years. And I've seen this for big brands. Ha. Ito yung marketing strategy nila one whole year they went through losses kasi nga commit na yun eh but on digital you can tell eh. you can tell after one or two weeks wait lang ah this is not working pivot ibahin magad mm-hmm. um quickly no i know that we're kind of over time now but quickly since you have been mentioning linkedin and i no know problem. linkedin is not really so much also here in the philippines like, ako, I love my LinkedIn, and I kind of stalk their LinkedIn also. I alam ko yung mga, um, yung mga tinapos mo na mga, kasi I saw all your uh, seminars in the past year. Grabe, ang dami nga. So, parang, oh, you're really very active on LinkedIn. Um, for what kind of businesses do you recommend LinkedIn? Like, aside from you, mga speakers, those who are coaches ba? Coaches? Life coach? Yeah, online learning coaches, life coaches. Uh, okay, I love LinkedIn. Like that's where, that's where my biggest following is. It's crazy. I think it's on top market, no? Dito. It, it, it's super on top. It? But the thing is, Diba? some stat Mm-mm. bombs. There are more LinkedIn users than Twitter users in the Philippines. Mm. Numbers wise, it's it's ridiculous. And that when you know, every time I say that in my CDM classes, 
And then, you know, when businesses learn about, but businesses, because they have the LinkedIn business and the Twitter advertisers coming to them. So they know the numbers there. It's surprising that LinkedIn has a lot of users. It's super untapped because a lot of people don't really know what kind of content to make there. And that's fine. LinkedIn is good if you're a business that's very, very freaking good at something. Like if you are a thought leader in something, you are, let's say you are incredible at your craft and you want to share your knowledge, that is a great place to be on. Uh, I have a relatively okay-sized community on LinkedIn, much, much bigger than Instagram, much, much bigger than YouTube. And the reason for this is because on LinkedIn, what I discovered in the last few years is that people go there with a purpose. You know, they're, they're not there to browse so much. Browsing happens on Facebook and Instagram. A lot, but you're going through. Oh, cool content! Oh, nice, nice content! I'm gonna follow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like this page. On YouTube, it's also intent based. But if you are already, if you're a fan of a channel, you will then browse through that channel and then you consume the content, whether or not it's related to your particular need right there. If you like the, if you like the YouTuber, you watch their content. LinkedIn is a bit different. LinkedIn's content there is very specific to a particular behavior. And my guess is that, because I, I, don't, I didn't do any kind of research or study on this. My guess is that the behavior when you go on LinkedIn is more purposive. I'm going to look for things I can learn. I'm going to go here for self-development. I'm going to go here for expertise. So people who share thoughts that are fleshed out get a lot of engagement on LinkedIn. I have a post um i think my most viral content was i i, I did a, i did a marketing analysis on the you know when 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 a telco responded to this um, influencer about they fixed her connection yeah. but they didn't fix anybody uh-huh. else's i'm not going to yeah. name names right i'm on record uh-huh. here and i'm a crisis <laughs> manager and i don't want to cause a crisis for a brand here even though that would be very good business for me <laughs> um i did a marketing analysis on that and the thing with LinkedIn is that if you have a very long, wordy post, it's fine. Because you're sharing thoughts and expertise and experience. Yeah, that, that post probably, I think the last time I checked, it was 40, 50,000 something engagement. And that's very valuable in LinkedIn to get anything more than 10,000 interactions. And a LinkedIn post is pretty incredible. I, I've never gotten an Instagram photo hit 10,000 <laughs> likes and even... Even if I've gone to like some big mountains, swear to now, mga 1K. But it's, uh, yeah, on LinkedIn, it, it will spread because of that opinion. So if you're a business and meron kang opinion on a particular topic, don't be scared. Don't be shy. Another thing I like about LinkedIn, halos walang judgment. You know, on Instagram, on YouTube, you know this. We, sometimes we feel like we have to be, we have to be our, on our best foot forward. Right? We have to be, uh, we, we prepare, uh, oh, set up talaga, lights uh, on Instagram. I'm not going to post anything if it's not, if it hasn't gone through some editing apps, right? Even if it's a pretty mountain. So it's difficult. On LinkedIn though, that vulnerability of telling people um, that your business struggled and then this is what you did to try and make up for it. Man, people love those kinds of stories there. Because it's all learning experiences. If you are into that kind of content where you want to learn things, you could spend hours on LinkedIn, promise. Another thing I like, if you're a business, if somebody comments or somebody tags your content, the organic reach on LinkedIn is crazy. Like It appears on all of their friends' news feeds. Because yung mga marketing analysis posts ko, ganun siya kumakalat. And that's how I get my corporate clients. Uh, I would, uh, someone will tag somebody and then I would get a message from this person or they check out my YouTube channel. And then they, they'll invite me for a, for a training program or to, to, to do some corporate workshop. So it's also good for lead generation. Uh, of course, that's not relevant for every business, but some of the Filipino brands that I think make amazing content on LinkedIn, you'd be surprised. Huh? SM. SM has like great stuff on LinkedIn. They talk about business resiliency they talk about recovery plans they talk about uh driving growth Parang, 
man, ang alam ko lang sa SM, supermarket. Correct. We got it all for you lang. <laughs> Ito na, all talaga. <laughs> pero, pero, sobra. Pero here on the platform, and I'm like, I literally write notes pag meron silang like resiliency lessons. Kasi, nag-suffer sila, di ba? So if they talk about re- resiliency, alam nila yan. Another group that I like, two groups I like on, on uh, LinkedIn, Maxis and Alpha Mart. Di ba? Parang nobody thinks of Alpha Mart as a thought leader brand. Honestly, yeah, <laughs> nobody. Let's be real. But I saw their stuff being posted by their employees on LinkedIn. Parang, oh my God, ang dami ko natutunan about business, community relationships. Oh, okay to ah. So, it's, if you're a business na you may just struggling ka to compete on content prettiness, content production, content frequency on Facebook, Instagram, try LinkedIn. Baka your POV on certain topics gets you the, gets you the traction. Baka nandun. Oh, and eventually gets us the money. <laughs> At the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's all about generating business for you. And here's the thing, one thing I learned as a, because this year also is a very important year for me because I'm, I'm, I'm my name. I'm registered as a business this year uh, because the whole corporate training thing kind of took off. Thanks. <laughs> so uh, it, it's all about developing and delivering results for your, for your business. And so I was thinking if the thought leadership opinion pieces on LinkedIn is generating this demand, why not make a career out of it, right? So for your business, if your content is generating demand, generating interest, it all leads to reputation. And I think that's my final word for this video slash podcast. Your, your business, it, it's a given. Kailangan okay yung product mo. I mean, if it's a bad product, no one's going to buy that. Diba? that given na okay dapat yung, pro, yung products and services. But, use social media to build reputation. Because if your reputation is positive, your chances of keeping your loyal buyers loyal is higher. Your chances of word of mouth marketing is higher. Your chances of being promoted to friends and family is higher. And that's free marketing if you think about it. Reputation, right? Correct. And with good reputation, kahit anong social media platform ka mag-migrate or mag-try out, you will always get followers, di ba? You'd always have an easier way of building your community. Correct. Kasi you, you, bring, them, you bring them over. Uh, yeah. YouTube community is very hard to build, but buti nga, I had my LinkedIn community, so a few of them came over to watch videos. Oh, nga, that's... Instead of like read... I write long posts and articles on LinkedIn. Siguro pagod na tao magbasa ng nonsense. Ko. Oh, okay. So, I, I will check that out. LinkedIn is a very untapped um, platform. Oh, yeah. And very good platform. It's really nice to, it's really nice for you to shed light on that. And it's really nice for our listeners to learn more about that. Kasi people are just focused on Facebook, Instagram, Correct. TikTok. I agree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sayang, yeah. Sayang. Sayang, madami. And you know, people on LinkedIn have money to spend, you know. It's, 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 it's your professional adult network. So, correct, correct. You know, yeah, my disposable income. So if you're a business, go Kaling. there. Thank you so much, Jason, for today. We had so much fun learning from you. Um, any last words sure. before we end the conversation? Like, promote naman yourself where we can follow you, see you, your businesses, <laughs> game. Oh, wow. So, oh, thanks for that. Um, First of all, I'd love to connect with your community online. If you guys are interested in marketing stuff, uh, do do follow me on LinkedIn. It's uh, I'm very easy to find in social media, Jason Cruz. But the spelling is J-S-N-C-R-U-Z. So J-S-N Cruz. Uh, super easy to find. That's my handle on Instagram as well and on Twitter. But I'm not really that active on Twitter. Uh, the If you want to work life content, if you want to like for, for personal development content, do subscribe to my YouTube channel, Better Today, with Jason Cruz. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jason. And um, I hope to see you around. Yeah, see you around. And thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's my pleasure. Okay, so I guess that's all for today. If you have any other ideas or questions or topics that you'd want me to cover in my future podcast episodes, don't forget to shoot me an email at culturewasabi at outlook.com 
or slip me a DM on my Instagram at jlian85. And I hope to see you on my next Live Well with Aromatherapist, Jerby Cole.